I'm excited to present you with the 2021 State of the City, and together we'll look back on the last year, the challenges, changes, and achievements, and then later we'll take a look ahead to fiscal year 2022. Welcome to Duncanville's 2021 State of the City. At the start of the fiscal year, the pandemic continued to put a strain on Duncanville residents and businesses. City staff, council, and I continued monitoring an ever-evolving set of circumstances and responded accordingly. CARES Act funding provided the city with nearly $2.2 million, and that funding was directed towards city services and essential operations to develop remote work capabilities a preventative measure to avoid any future service disruption. These monies were carefully monitored to ensure compliance with federal guidelines. Monies from the CARES Act also went to the library's purchase of items such as mobile hotspots for those doing distance learning during the pandemic, and sanitation was improved in city facilities, including the Duncanville Fieldhouse, to prevent COVID-19 transmission while allowing youth sports and activities to resume safely. It also went to reimbursement for police, emergency medical services, and fire personnel who supported the Ellis Davis Fieldhouse COVID Testing Center. Matt Bryant, our utility superintendent, and I are in the Summit Tank Pump Station. As you all recall, Winter Storm Uri caused a major disruption, not only for us, but throughout the DFW Metroplex. As a result of Winter Storm Uri, there were many, many leaks around our city. Matt, you want to address that, please? Yes, Mayor. So we had crews out the whole time, constantly looking for leaks. We knew right away we had an issue on the north part of town because that's where the biggest pressure loss was. And we found an aerial crossing over I-20 actually blew to pieces. And so we immediately moved in, we got the leak isolated, and we fully recovered within 24 hours. Another thing that impacted our ability to keep our water pressure up was the tragedy of a fire in several homes on Wheatland and Clark Road. Seven fire departments from around the, our city responded to that fire. As a result, our water levels in our tanks were depleted to a very dangerous level. So what we as a city had to consider at that moment was whether we needed to issue a boil water notice. Now Matt, as I understand it, uh, we were one of the few cities in the DFW Metroplex that avoided issuing a bottle boil water notice. That's correct. So working 24 seven around the clock, constant updates, nobody slept. We were always on top of this issue. On a Friday afternoon, I was contacted by our assistant city manager saying, what could happen here is we may need to issue a boil water notice if things don't improve. As a result of that, we identified the five major water users in our city, and I personally got on the phone to them and requested that they cease business on that Friday until we could see that our water levels were being replenished to a safe level. All five of them agreed to this, and they shut down their operations. We also simultaneously issued requests to you, our citizenry, to contain your water usage by not running your dishwashers, not running your washing machines, and to be very, very careful in the use of your water. As a direct result, mostly, of you, our citizens, controlling your water usage and responding to this request, we avoided issuing the boil water notice. And I was able, on Monday morning, to call these five businesses back and say, thank you very much for your cooperation. You may return your business operations to normal. And they were very thankful. So folks, to you, our citizens, we are so very, very thankful for your response, for your understanding, and your cooperation. You, our citizens, make this city a community that loves each other and cooperates. We're so very, very thankful to you. 
Any celebration of our success, however, was short-lived. An untimely death of Paul Fredrickson, our assistant city manager and an individual who was serving as our interim city manager, while we searched, while we as a council searched for a permanent city manager, his passing away just caught us all in shock. It was untimely. It affected the council, the entire city staff team, and the many, many friends throughout the city that Paul had engaged with and had done such a great job for our city. And we still miss him and we mourn his passing. One of the council's most important responsibilities is the recruitment and appointment of a city manager. After all, no person is more essential to bringing the council's vision for our city into reality than the person who has that job. Over months, your city council narrowed the field from dozens of qualified applicants down to the one with just the right mix of experience, knowledge, and vision. On February 8, 2021, we welcomed Aretha Farrell Benavides to the city of Duncanville. The council and I recognize the historical significance of Ms. Farrell Benavides, the first woman of color to hold the office of city manager in Duncanville. And we are excited to see how she is guiding our community into the future. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Aretha Farrell Benavides, and I'm genuinely excited to be part of the City of Champions, both as a resident and as your city manager. Paul believed in service above self and the work we do here on behalf of the Duncanville citizens. Losing him soon after I started with the city was devastating. He was more than just a respected colleague. He was my friend. I needed to rebuild our leadership team. Continuity and a trusted familiar face are what the moment called for. This is why I asked our then police chief, Robert D. Brown Jr., to step into the role of interim assistant city manager. I am thankful he agreed and that he is now permanently appointed our assistant city manager. Thank you. My transition to assistant city manager was made easier by the fact that Mark Levigny was ready and able to step into the role I was vacating. His 28 years of experience with the Duncanville Police Department prepared him to be our interim police chief and maintain the level of service the Duncanville residents have come to expect from us. As I was saying, the budget is super important for redevelopment. Hello, Mr. Brown, how are you? Hello, Gus. Our city manager quickly prioritized our city's most immediate needs. Our recently renamed Development Services Department is an important part of our local government because of its focus on supporting established local businesses as well as attracting new ones to our city. Proving to have a keen eye for talent, she hired Augustine Gus Garcia as Economic Services Director. Ms. Sedina Atmore was also brought on as the Managing Director of Fiscal Services, bringing her impressive resume and 30 years of municipal government finance experience to our city. Ms. Atmore has already helped us present a balanced budget to the City Council. Our management team is strong, diverse, innovative, and driven to deliver for you, the residents of Duncanville. The comprehensive plan adopted by your city council in 2017 provides a framework for both future development and redevelopment decisions, setting a path toward positive change. A major step toward implementing the comprehensive plan was a complete ordinance revision, which was adopted by the city council on March 2nd, 2021. City planner Sky Thibodeau is here to tell us why the zoning ordinance changes were needed. Sky, tell us about that. Thank you, Mayor. There were three reasons primarily for the for the new zoning ordinance update. One was to correct and, and realign outdated regulations. The second was to align the document with the comprehensive plan that was previously adopted by City Council. And the third uh, reason was to really provide for better redevelopment scenarios with better standards for redevelopment. Uh, Sky, planning and zoning used to be part of, well, it was separate and now it's part of economic development. Can you tell us why that happened? That's correct. You know, the city is really in a state of, of the need for redevelopment, basically. I would say the city is more than 90% developed. So aligning with economic development is a more efficient way to develop and redevelop the city from this state that Duncanville is in. Duncanville has built a strong reputation as a city committed to high quality scenic standards in our public spaces and on our roadways. Last year, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission 
awarded Duncanville's Parks and Recreation Department with a nearly $750,000 grant for the Kidsville Fort and Splash Pad projects. Our Keep Duncanville Beautiful Commission was also recognized as one of 10 winners of the 2021 Governor's Community Achievement Award. With that award, Duncanville will receive $210,000 from Texas Department of Transportation for a landscaping project. Safely bringing back our popular and beloved Independence Day Parade and fireworks celebration was a big priority of the city's Parks and Recreation Department. This last year, thousands returned to enjoy a safe event with great food, music, and a spectacular fireworks display. And during those festivities, I had the opportunity to award Starling Stringer of 94.9 FM KLTY with the key to the city as recognition for her outspoken support of Duncanville. She is a true champion. The approved 2018 bond program, Proposition C Project, set the city on a path toward the reconstruction of the Central Fire Station Number 1. After receiving citizen feedback via a survey in the town hall, the City Council and I gave final approval of the station's new design and a brand new engine custom tailored to fit the needs of our Duncanville Fire Department and City was added to our firefighting arsenal in October. The Duncanville Police Department is the city's most public facing government service. Mark Levigny, who serves as the interim chief of police, has made it a goal to engage with residents in a more personalized manner by meeting them on their morning walks. That's right, Mayor. This year I've had the opportunity to step out of my office and enjoy a walk here in Armstrong Park with some Duncanville residents such as these, some friends I've met on this trail. And uh, we've shared some concerns. They've, they've spoken with me about some of their concerns and we've also been able to take a few laughs together. Philip, what do you think? Well, I tell you, I have to be, uh, I'm very impressed with, uh, with Mark, as I call him. You may call him chief, but in our, in our walks, he get hit with various questions with some of the citizens and I feel like I have a right to ask him being a citizen of Duncanville for over 27 years. I think one of the first things I asked him was, well, since our property taxes constantly increase, what are we, what is it being uh, reflected in our police department? And he was able to explain that to me while I had peace about it as for saying that it takes a while to vet new officers and with people retiring, you just can't put someone that's in there. I was very uh, pleased with that answer and thank you again. Well, thank you, Philip. Appreciate it. After the 2019 adoption of a new city logo, management and council directed police to design a new patch that incorporated the updated branding. Interim Chief Levigny revealed the new Duncanville police patch during a 2021 council meeting. Interim Assistant Police Chief Stogner, what else has been going on at the Duncanville Police Department? Well, Duncanville first responders, along with those from Cedar Hill, DeSoto, and Lancaster, have been for years been on a proverbial island when it came to radio communication. In the past, this has prevented direct communication between Duncanville and other agencies during critical incidents. The approval by the council and yourself for the allocation for funding for the Project 25 or P25 mm -hmm. radio equipment integration with the Dallas P25 infrastructure, which supports that equipment, is a game changer. It will allow for communication between police, fire, and emergency services across the entire region, uh, improving safety for Duncanville. Starting in September of 2020, the Vehicle Identification Number Inspection Program has been a great success for our department and Duncanville residents. The Duncanville Police Department is fortunate to have two of its personnel, an officer and a detective, out of approximately 400 officers in the 254 counties in Texas trained to perform vehicle number and trailer identification number inspections in our great state. There's definitely a need in our community for this service. We currently have appointments made by citizens weeks in advance to have an authorized inspection before they can obtain registration on their vehicles. By demonstrating a commitment to transformational reform, which has earned us the support of local community groups and your elected leaders, the Duncanville Police Department has been accepted into ABLE, the active bystander for law enforcement project. Backed by prominent civil rights and law enforcement leaders, the evidence-based field tested ABLE project provides practical, active bystandership strategies and tactics to law enforcement officers to prevent misconduct, reduce mistakes, and promote health and wellness. In a year, this city is always at work on planned projects intended to improve life here in Duncanville. I'm joined by Assistant Director of Public Works, Jackie Colton, 
and Parks and Recreation Director Bart Stevenson to share some of what's changing. Last year's Center Street project was finally completed with mill and overlay. With that project done, Public Works turned its focus to Bond Proposition B, Street Reconstruction Project, East Daniel Dale Road between Main and Highway 67. The estimated completion date of that project is fall of 2022. And Duncanville residents may have noticed the appearance of on-street shared bike lanes, also known as share roads, which are funded by the 2018 Parks Bond election. They are being implemented to create biking loops within the city. The first phase has been completed for share roads on Greenstone, Middale, Santa Fe, Center, Big Stone Gap, and very soon, Daniel Dale Road. Decals and signage also give the motorists advance notice of the bike shared lanes. Additional routes will be added in the future to connect our neighborhoods to schools, parks, and shopping destinations. Our return to in-person meetings over the summer allowed us to bring back traditions such as Champions of the City. Some of those recognized since we returned are Zul Hodani, the owner of Popeye's Louisiana Chicken, recognized for his unwavering support of Duncanville first responders. John and Edie Ewing, founders of Young Legacy Builders, a youth entrepreneurship and mentorship program that's building strong children right here in the city of Duncanville. And Pat and Ken Weaver for their dedication, service, and support of Duncanville. And Madeline Kelly Schwach for all that she's done in the Complete Count Committee and getting our 2020 census done in such a fabulous fashion. Long overdue, Juneteenth became a nationally recognized holiday when signed into law by President Joe Biden on June 17, 2021. Juneteenth commemorates June 19, 1865, when Union soldiers brought the news of freedom to enslaved black people in Texas. Two months after the Confederacy surrender and approximately two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Recognizing the importance of this moment, your city council and mayor adopted an amendment making it a holiday for the city of Duncanville. City staffing is kept lean with an estimated one city employee per 150 residents. Despite its lean size, service above self informs and inspires city staff as they work daily on all of our behalf. In the coming weeks and months, citizens will see departmental and staffing changes in line with our renewed focus on you, our customers. One example is the renaming of code enforcement to neighborhood services, which will be headed by Jeremy Tennant, the new department manager. In 2021, Duncanville Water Utilities successfully delivered 9.5 million gallons per day of superior quality water as rated by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. In the next year, our water utility department will continue upgrading water tanks and the pump house at the Daniel Dale facility so they can continue to deliver that. Every five years, the city conducts a water and wastewater rate study to determine the optimal utility rate to cover the cost of operations in the future. The last year that the city raised utility rates was in fiscal year 2017-2018. For background, water is purchased wholesale from Dallas Water Utilities and each year they pass along a rate increase which the council has not passed on to the benefit of our businesses and residents. Our estimated cost for FY22, however, is 10% more than it was in fiscal year 18. Duncanville treats wastewater with the Trinity River Authority, and our estimated cost for fiscal year 22 for this is 25% more than it was in fiscal year 18. Additionally, as we pay as we go, meaning we do not take out debt for capital improvement projects for our city's aging water and wastewater infrastructure, yet the cost of materials, concrete, labor, etc., continue to rise. We are facing the reality that the city's utility fund is not sustainable at our current rates. With this knowledge, your city council and I will be discussing this topic in the coming months to determine the best path forward. You are invited to participate in these discussions by reaching out directly to your council, members, and me by submitting comments during our city council meetings. 
stay up to date on upcoming council meetings by visiting the Duncanville.com website and viewing the events calendar. I am filled with great confidence for our city and its future. I thank our management, our staff, our council members, and I as your mayor thank you, our citizens, personally for all that you do to make this a great city. God bless America. God bless Duncanville, the city of champions. We're all here for you in 2022.